First Kings chapter 20. And Ben and Ben Hadad, the king of Syria. And it's wonder how Syria is back in our news again, but here Syria is an enemy of Israel, gathered all his hosts together. And there were 30 and 2 kings. So there's other nations with Ben Hadad, Syria, 32, 33 with Syria. And horses and chariots war. And he went out and besieged Samaria, that's the capital of Israel, and warred against it. So here's these enemy troops that come up against Israel, the capital, and besieges to surround the city. No one comes in and nobody goes out. And what you do is you would starve the city out as far as all the supplies would be gone. And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, the king of Israel, into the city and said unto him, Thus saith Ben Hadad. So he sends some men in there. He goes, Go find the king, go find Ahab. Here's the message The silver and thy gold is mine. All right, deliver it up. Thy wives. Also, deliver them up. Now, what's remarkable about that statement right there? That would mean Jezebel. Take her. <laughs> Take Jezebel. That wicked, vile woman. That'd be a pleasure to Samaria. That'd be a pleasure to God in, in an instance. Also, thy children will be the royal seed. Even, thy, even the goodliest are mine. The best people you have to offer. In that city. So all the riches, all the treasures, your family, they're mine. They belong to me. And the king of Israel answers and said, My Lord, O king. That's the enemy. He's speaking to the enemy, like, hey, how you doing? We're buddies. According to thy saying, your gold, your silver, your, your children, your family, and the best people, they're mine. According to thy saying, I am thine, and all that I have. Uh, he's, he's compliant. What a man to be speaking about his family, the husband of wives, the father of children, the ruler of a nation of all goodly people. Take him. In the, in the sake and the honor of peace, take him. They're yours. He's a ruler. He's a, he's a leader of a nation. And for peace, take him. And Israel throughout history unto the present time has done whatever they can, whatever they should in order for peace. Even our own time, they got these, these areas and these walls in Israel today and they have moved it more and more for their enemy to get land and for peace. And they're still ro launching rockets into Israel today as we speak. Israel will do and do anything and will gain anything for the sake of peace, and they get no peace. For God says there is no peace, saith the Lord unto the wicked, and Israel's being wicked. Ahab, though he's a puppet under Jezebel, his wife is totally wicked. She's got all these prophets, and now she's out to kill the Lord's prophet. I mean, what would you think if, if the man of your house, whether you be his, his wife or his or his father in the house, what if you thought, hey, people come to the door and said, well, here, take them. Well, is not that what Lot did? Where's those men that we may know that? Well, here, here's my daughters. It's not, not the same thing. Is that not the mark of a wicked man? Even though Lot is righteous, the Bible say just, that's not something you would do. And this is the same thing that, uh, I forget the man's name in Judges, where, you know, they come out the door again, sodomized, banging at the door, so let's have that man, we may know him, and the guy gave him his wife, and they abused her all night. That's something, this is the, the, the fact of what Ahab and his condition is. All right, I want peace, just take my family. I don't, and don't have no regard to what they would do. What would they do with his daughters? They would ravish them. They would uh, abuse them, as the Bible has already said in the book of Judges. You take them for peace. And he doesn't even care about his gold. He doesn't care about his silver. I want peace. It's a wicked thing. And it's 
Many people do not show that what we're just reading now in 1 Kings 20 has happened in Genesis and it has happened in, in, in Judges. Just leave me alone and take them. That's vile. Look at Abraham. For peace to go into Egypt, she's my sister. Isaac, as he's dwelling in Giar, for peace to be with the people, she's my sister. It's wickedness. And the messengers came again and said, Thus speaketh Ben Hadad, saying, Now, this is the second time. This is the second set of messengers. He sent the word back, Okay, you can have my wives, you can have my goat, you can have my son. And Ben Hadad's like, Okay, fine, I got this guy. He's, he's, under the, he's under my palm, he's under my thumbs, he's mine. I got him in control. He's fearing. Although I have sent unto thee, saying, Thou shalt deliver me thy silver and thy gold and thy wives and thy children, that's the first time. Here's the second demand. Yeah, I will send my servants, the people that are unto me, unto thee tomorrow about this time. And they shall search thy house and the houses of thy servants. And it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thy eyes, whatever you like or not, isn't that the lust of the eyes? They shall put it in their hand and take it away. All right, you give me your gold, your silver, your wives, and your children, and the best people. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to send my people into your land. And whatever you cherish after that, whatever you got your eyes set on, my servants are going to come, and they're going to take. You like your horses? They're going to take your horses. You like your knickknacks? We're going to take your knickknacks. You like your food? They're going to, they're going to take everything that you like. That's the second demand. First, first demand, me the king. Second demand, my servant. Listen, you don't care. You have no regard. I got you. I got the victory. You're afraid. Then the king of Israel, Ahab, called unto the elders of the land, the people of respect, the people who are, who are in charge, and said, Mark, I pray you. An interesting word to be used when we've been looking at the tribulation period. In chapter 18, Mark. There's two marks in the tribulation period. There's Mark of God upon the 144,000, and there's a Mark of the Beast. I pray you and see how this man, Ben Hadad, seeketh mischief. For he sent unto me for my wives, and for my children, and for my silver, and for my gold, and I denied him not. That's the first command, the first set of messengers. And all the elders and all the people sent unto him, hearken not unto him, nor consent. All right, now they see it. They've heard. Here's, here's the messengers again. Now it's affected the, the elders, not just the king. These people are coming into the land. They're going to take whatever they want. Well, that's the elders. Wherefore he said unto the messengers of Ben Ende, well, they're still there. The second set of messengers are still there. Tell my lord the king. All that thou didst send for thy servant at the first will I do. My wife, my children, my gold, my silver, the goodly people. But this thing, the second time, I will not do. You're just going to send your people and you're going to loot us. You're going to take from us. And the messengers departed and brought him word again. That would be ben Dad. And ben Hadad sent unto him and said, it's the third time, third set of messengers. The gods do so unto me. Now let's go back to chapter 19, verse 7. Jezebel speaking. So let the gods do unto me. That seems to be an oath taken by heathen gods. Let those gods who are over my authority and not the God of the Bible. So in America today, not America past, but America today, if you're going to courtroom, you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So God's help me. So help me, God's. That would be the proper. For America does not have Jehovah. They have other gods. They have other religious gods. So that would be the that would be the oath in the courtroom today. So help me, God's. I do. You want to be biblical? That's that would be it. So he's a worshiper of gods, as Jezebel. The gods do so unto me and more also. If the dust of Samaria, 
It's a city. Shall suffice for the handfuls of all the people that follow me. Listen, it's going to make your city just dust. If there's not enough dust after I destroy you for all the people that are on my side. Everybody can get a handful of dust. And may there be more dust than the people are gathered with me right now. If what he's saying is, I'm going to I'm going to rubble your city, and everybody's going to take. It. Listen, if I can't have that second request, my servants can't go in there and grab everything that what they want. They'll go in there, and we'll destroy you, and they'll take out handful of dust of Samaria. And the king of Israel, Ahab, answered and said, "Send the messengers back again." And what this is the fourth time? Tell him, Ben Hadad, let him not. That girdeth, that's the first time that word shows up. Girdeth means put on. You put your pants on, you girded your pants. Girdeth on his harness. That's the first time that word shows up. That's a that's a, a harness for the chariots, for the horses. It belongs on the animal and the chariot. Boast, that's the first time that word shows up. That's pride. So let him not. That, gar that girdeth up his harness, boasts himself as he that putteth it off. So, what Ahab has told him, shut your mouth. You haven't even finished the battle yet. You haven't even put the stuff on the horse yet to get here. And you're already talking about, you're going to rubble our city into dust. Put your armor on your horses. Put the chariot in order. Put your troops in rally. Then let's talk. So evidently, Ben-Hadad and the armies are outside of Samaria, and they're just carousing. They're just hanging out. They're just waiting for Samaria to become no more food, no more water, and come crying out and, and, and give themselves over. That's what they're doing. Because watch the next verse. And it came to pass when Ben Hadad heard this message, as he was drinking, he and the kings of the pavilions, and that, that shows up in verse one, the thirty-two king. There, there's no battle going on. They're sitting in these pavilions, thirty-two kings, and they're having drinking parties. They're they're drinking water. Maybe they're drinking wine. Maybe they're getting drunk. You're not in battle. You're just laying back, waiting, waiting. There's no. There's, so what Ahab says? Listen. Get the battle ready. Put your mouth where the action is. Then he said unto his servants, set yourselves in array. Okay, go ahead. Do what Ahab said. Get in battle. Line up. Put your armor on. Get your swords. Let's go. And they set themselves in array against the city. So Ahab opened up his mouth, kind of gave Ben-Hadad orders. Come and fight. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, king of Israel. Well, now look at that. This is a wicked king. This is a wicked government under Jezebel. And God still sends him a prophet. Israel has not done right, has not ever had a right king yet. They're worshiping now the golden calves. And now they're worshiping Baal and Balaam and Ashtoreth. And God sends a prophet. He still loves Israel. And today would be for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in should not perish, but have everlasting life. God didn't send us a prophet. He sent us Jesus Christ. Unto Ahab, king of Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord. Now you would think, uh-oh, Ahab's going to get it. Hast thou seen all this great multitude? Ben Hadad, the Syrians, and the 32 army, the 32 kings in their army. You see how great the people are over there, Ahab? See them all? It's a great multitude. That's God saying it's a great multitude. This is a God that has, I don't know how many angels, in numeral count of angels in heaven. Both on his side and both with Lucifer. Says, Ahab, look at all the look at all the multitude over there. It's gotta be a lot. Behold. I, God, will deliver it into thy hand this day. Wow, you would think God would say to Ahab and his wife, I'm going to destroy you with them. What's going on here? Ben Hadad's relying on the gods and not God. 
Ben Haydad in verse 11, going by Ahab, said, boast. That's pride. As soon as that king comes up with God's small G-O-D-A and shows up with his pride, look how good I am. God comes down with a hammer and said, okay, you know what? Ahab, you're wicked and vile. But that king is just as much wicked and vile. And he's against me. And if he were to win the battle, I would get a soiled name. I'm going after that pride. And you better be careful with pride because God hates pride. Look at what God's doing. Ahab, a wicked king. Though we have not seen no pride in Ahab yet. From the study of Ahab, he has not been prideful. Here comes a king in pride and God said, okay, guess what? He's gone. You want to talk about my people like that? I will curse them that curse you. There it goes to the Jew. God brings down the pride. Old Testament, New Testament, Gospels. Whether you are a unsaved man or you are a Christian, God will bring down your pride. He says, this day, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Well, look at that. He's showing himself to Ahab. He's giving Ahab a chance. I'll prove to you I'm God. And Ahab said, by whom? Who is going to get this victory? God. Now, that's a, that's a great question. All right, God comes up. He says, listen, I'm going to destroy that enemy to this day, today. Ahab steps up and he says, not in pride. Just who? Who's going to do it, Lord? And he said, thus saith the Lord, even by the young men of the princes of the provinces. Now, the youth, young men, this is not elder men. This is not, you know, dog-faced men that have been in the military and strengthened and the elite of the elite. He says the young ones, the new the, the men are just fresh in the, in the military. They've just signed up. They haven't got any experience. Those young men. They may not even know how to fight. And even worse still, not only young men, but the princes of the provinces. This would be the men that go into the service, and they got men who got money. They got men who got prestige. They got men who are no others. It's by not what you know. It's by who you know that their children, they would get the luxury job. They would be the captains. They would be the ones that sit back and don't go into the battlefield. They would be the ones that get the best leadership positions in the army. They wouldn't be on the battlefield. They wouldn't be in the trenches because they're the children of the princes. They are very, very light foot. They're very, very weak. They're very, very not into war. And God says those men who you would think least in the army, he's going. they're the ones who are going to get the victory. The one that is back of the line making the soup and making the sandwiches or whatever they make for the military. That guy that's got KP all the time, he doesn't fight, he's going to go in there and win. The one that sits behind the desk, never to see battle because his father is the leader of this group of people and he's well known. That one that sits behind the desk is going to get out from that desk and he's going to conquer ben Haydad. The very young, not the old. Then he said, all right, Ahab again, who shall order the battle? Now, Ahab has not disagreed. He is not going against God. Now, the next question is, well, Lord, okay, understand the youth. Those are not, you know, they're not the Navy SEALs. They're not the, the, the Rangers. They're just every commandery yeoman. Who's going to lead them? Who's going to be their captain? Who is going to bring them into the battle? And he, God, answered, thou, you have, I'm going to lead you out before those people and the victory is going to come. And we're going to, we're going to stop there because we got the battle next and we got other things that's going to happen. But let's stand right here. I think it's a good spot to happen. The battle is not, God sent the prophet, said that battle, Ahab, you're going to get the victory with me. Let's leave it like that.